All right, let's go and have a look at another example, again, coming back to the ideas of physics. In this case, we're going to look at moment of inertia. So what is moment of inertia? Moment of inertia is essentially the resistance that an object has to rotating. Just like inertia is a measure of an object's ability to resist change of linear motion, moment of inertia is a measure of the, ob of the object's ability to resist rotational motion. So this is the analog of inertia for rotations. If R is a plane lamina with density rho, and L is a straight line, so that's going to be our rotation axes, that may or may not be in the, the xy plane, the moment of inertia I of R around that axis L is defined to be the double integral of, and I'll look at the second one, it's W squared rho xy dA. So what is that? Let's break it down into these elements. It is density times area, so this is our mass element. So you think of this as a little tiny speck on that lamina, and the mass of that tiny little speck. And then we are multiplying by w squared, so the square of its distance to the axes of rotation, and then we are integrating over this. So this is the integral of all the masses times the square of the distance that mass is from the axes of rotation. And this is the moment of inertia. So in the particular case where we choose our axes accordingly, so for example, if L is the x-axis, then the distance is going to be the y value of the point, and that's called uh, Ix, the moment of inertia about the x-axis. So that's the integral of y squared rho dA. The moment, about, the moment of inertia about the y-axis is given by I sub y, and it's the integral of x squared rho xy, and then we've also got our moment of inertia about the z-axis, or what we call our polar moment of inertia. These are often referred to as well as the second moments. And that second, the word second, is coming from the power here, the two, more easily seen in the formulas in the three special cases below, the y squared or the x squared, as opposed to the moments we talked about earlier, the moment about the x-axis and the y-axis, which were just the, the first powers on x and y. Those are often referred to as the first moments. These are the second moments, or the moment of inertia. Let's have a look at an example where we compute them. So here we've got a uniform rectangular plate with base length A and height B. So I'll write down our rectangular plate or I'll draw it out. So we've got a base length of A and a height B. And we know that the mass is M. And it's centered at the origin. So we've got our center here. Maybe I'll put my axes in a different color. So we've got our origin centered here. So then I can label some of these points. This would be a over 2. This one would be negative a over 2. This would be b over 2. This would be negative b over 2. And so that's our rectangular plate. And what we're interested in is finding the polar moment of inertia. We want to show that it's actually 1 over 12m times a squared plus b squared. What is our polar moment of inertia? That's given by I sub z or I sub 0. So I sub 0 is given by the integral over the region. So I'll just write it down as the integral over the region R, which is that rectangle, of x squared plus y squared times the density. But it's uniform, so that means it's constant density. So we'll just call it k, and that would be dx dy or, or dA, because I'm haven't really specified the order of integration yet because I haven't thought about it too much, so I could write dA instead of dx dy, but I'll just write, leave it as dx dy. And this is constant. This is our constant density because it's uniform density, so just some value k, whatever that is. We can actually work out what k is if we want. 
because we know the mass is m, we know the area is a times b, so we know that a times b, or area, times density is equal to mass. Or in other words, k is equal to m over a b. So that will be worth knowing eventually, but the idea is that this k, this constant density, we actually know what it is. It's m over the area. Okay, let's go ahead and compute this integral. We're going to integrate over the rectangle, so that's going to be we can do either one first. Maybe we'll do um, the y integral first. So I'll go negative a over 2 to a over 2. And then the y integral will be negative b over 2 to b over 2. And then we've got x squared plus y squared. That's dy dx. And I'll bring that k out front. I'll just leave it as a k so I don't have to keep writing m over a b. So that's k times the integral of negative a over 2 to a over 2. The integral with respect to y, that's x squared y plus 1 third y cubed from negative b over 2 to b over 2. We could have exploited a bit of symmetry here as well. That was an even function. We were integrating it over a symmetric interval. So we could exploit that symmetry, but that's fine. We'll just deal with it here because we just have to evaluate at the two endpoints and then take their difference and that's really just going to be twice the value at the first endpoint. So we're going to plug b over 2 in. That's x squared times b over 2 plus 1 third b cubed over 8 and then we're going to minus off the value when we plug negative b over 2 in but that would just give us the same quantity so we effectively have twice that here. So I'll bring that 2 out front, 2k. Then we're going to integrate with respect to x. That becomes a 1 third x cubed b over 2 plus a 1 third b cubed over 8 x. And that's going to be from negative a over 2 to a over 2. Again, we were just integrating an even function, so we could have used symmetry, but we'll use it here. So now I put a over 2 in, so that's 1 third a cubed b over, and then we've got the 8 times 2, so maybe I'll leave it as just 8 times 2, just so I can see where these quantities are coming from. Then we plug in the a over 2 into the next one, that's 1 third b cubed over 8 a over 2, and then again we plug in the lower limit of integration, but it's going to be minus those things. Uh, which end up giving us the same value, so we get twice of the value we got at the upper limit of integration, so I'll change that number out front to a 4. And so now I got that the denominator has this 3 times 16, so I get a 3 coming out. There is a 16, but it can cancel with the 4 up top to leave me with a 3 times 4. And then what's left is I've got an a cubed b plus a b cubed a. And so I've got a k over 12. And I can factor out an a and a b. And I'm left with an a squared plus b squared. And then this is where I notice that k a b, that's m. That is equal to m. That's where we're using that. So this boils down to m over 12 a squared plus b squared. And so there is our polar moment of inertia. All right, so that's it for the part one of this video. In the next part, part two, it's going to be a short one. It's just one example from uh, statistics and probability an application of using double integrals to find the probability of an event occurring uh, given we have a probability density function that depends on two variables. So we'll see you in the next video.